Before I start this video, let me take 30 seconds to tell you something about Exergic. Exergic is India's most trusted and most experienced institute for online gate preparation. I am Chandresh Mahajan, founder and chief educator at Exergic. I am an All India Rank 37 in gate mechanical engineering, an ex Indian oil officer having 7 plus years of teaching experience as of now. These are the GATE 2021 Mechanical Engineering Toppers from Exergic. You can find their preparation strategy on Exergic's website. To know more about our GATE courses, you can visit our website or contact us on these details. Also, you can download Exergic GATE preparation app from Google Play Store. The link is available in the description of video. Hello everyone, welcome to Exergic. After I uploaded the last video, I got lot of messages and comments to discuss this question also, right? And this is such a question where again there are two options which look feasible. So which exactly, which exact option here is correct that we will discuss. And is this question debatable that we will discuss. And whether you should challenge this question that we will discuss. And I will also show you the simulation, the animation of this mechanism that should give us the perfect answer because this is a question about motion only. Na? So if we see its simulation, we should be able to know that whether we should challenge or what exactly should be the answer, right? So everything about this question I am going to discuss. A planar four bar linkage mechanism with three revolute one kinematic pairs and one prismatic kinematic pair is shown in the figure. So this is talking about four bar linkage with three R one P pair. It has clearly mentioned that it is three R one P pair. Correct. I will come to this where AB is perpendicular to CE. So this is AB and this is CE. They are perpendicular. Basically at B you have a slot available where it can slide right and A and B angle between them cannot change means B cannot rotate about A. This slot cannot change its orientation. B cannot change its orientation about A. That's what it means. Only then AB will always be perpendicular to CE. So this end B if I show you just the diagram of AB. So this is how it looks. This is how it looks. Right. This end is rigidly fixed. The slider is rigidly fixed at 90 degree. So that is perpendicular. So AB is perpendicular to CE. And FD is perpendicular to CE as well. So that is very clear to us that this is a straight single one link. This FD and CE. Maybe they are welded together, joined together. By whatever ways, the angle between them cannot change. That is going to be always perpendicular. So this angle is always 90 degree. That is one single link. This is one single link. Correct. Now, FD is perpendicular to CE. The T-shaped link CDEF, CDEF, this T-shaped link, single link is constructed such that slider B is constructed such that slider B, this is the slider B, can cross the point D and CE is sufficiently long. So this line is important it can create some confusions so I will talk about this line later right now I won't discuss this because I have to tell you two three different ways so I will come to this line and I will discuss this line in more detail but right now just read it and whatever it has written I will just speak it out and not explain it in detail so here it is simply saying that this slider B can cross D it is constructed in such a way and CE is sufficiently long so CE is very long don't think that this B will fall out means while rotating at any point of time this B can go out of C from here or from E. It cannot go out C is infinitely long sufficiently long okay. So this is what the question has given to us. Now what are the four options about? The four options are about the motion of this mechanism. How the mechanism is going to move perform the motion whether it's a grash off or non grash off or uh, there are certain uncertainties in the configuration it is on the border of Grashof or non Grashof. So those are the things that this question is talking about. But the most important and the very first thing given in this question that it is a 3R1P chain. Now when you have been given a 3R1P chain 
if you try to apply the usual gresh of law that you know that you cannot do that law directly if you apply you will get wrong answer because that gresh of law that you know is for four r chain it's for four revolute joint chain correct so this question i am telling you it's directly it is giving you it's a three r one p chain directly you can apply the formula for gresh of law by doing the infinity uh, method and then you are going to get the answer so this is this is not a difficult question if you know the concept right if you don't know the concept definitely it is a difficult question for you rather you cannot solve this question if you don't know the concept of gresh of law for 3 r 1 p chain so at least exergic students know about this already it was there in the course i think for last two to three months ago means before gate it was already uploaded and it was lecture number 18 1 8 slider of the of the planar mechanism unit right so in that case we discuss the concept of ground hinge how we are going to extend them to infinity how we are going to modify the formula using the infinity concept and use it so as i was telling you if 3r1p you read here you understood here you directly use this that concept you will be able to get the answer and that's why majority of the exergic students who covered this were able to easily answer this question so i am not saying that it is a difficult question but it is a debatable question debatable question and that debate also i will clear by the end of this video now if i talk about the options here option a says it is a greshoff chain with ab ab completely rotatable about the ground link fg this is the ground link fg right both of them are fixed are ground that's equivalent to a single link so ab is going to completely rotate about fg this is one and ag and cdef will oscillate means AG, this AG and this CDEF, they will oscillate but AB will completely rotate. So I don't think that is possible. That is possible here that if A is completely rotating, I mean AB is completely rotating. What is this saying? AB completely rotatable. So if AB is completely rotating, A point will also be completely rotating. If A point is completely rotating, AG link will be completely rotating. Here it is saying that AB is completely rotating, but AG is oscillating. So that is not possible, right? That is illogical. So A option cannot be correct here. Then it says that on the border of Greshoff and non Greshoff chain with uncertain configuration. So this is something that we will discuss after we decide. Na? We will analyze it whether it is Greshoff or non Greshoff. After that only we will see na, that whether it is, it is on the border of Greshoff or non Greshoff or what, right? So option B is something that we can discuss only once we have done our analysis, right? And we are going to get some answer from that. So this option is not going to be of any use. Then comes a Greshoff chain with AG, AG, AB and CDEF, all three completely rotatable about link FG. So this, this and this means this link, this link and this, this AB, all of them are completely rotating about FG. And then a non Grashof chain with all oscillating links. So all of them, all of the links like CD, EF, AG, AB, all of them are oscillating. So this is option number D. Now, when we discuss, when we are going to discuss the analysis for 3R1P chain, you already know what is going to happen. But still I will give you a clarity to many students who have done a very blunder in this question. Look. What they have done is that they have tried to apply the Greshoff law for 4 R chain. That method is simply wrong. Even if the answer that you get from that may match with some other method. I will talk about all the methods. But still applying the Greshoff law for 4 R chain is simply wrong here. What they have done that they have said that link 1 is of 3 centimeter, then link 2 is of 5, link 3 is of 3, link 4 is of 1.5. How does that make sense? If Even if you forget about CDEF, even if you consider that yes, this is going to rotate, they are going to move, still the distance between F and B, that is going to change, right? AG distance cannot change, AB distance cannot change, GF distance, distance cannot change, but as it will keep on rotating, it will keep on sliding, this distance between B and F will keep on changing. So it is not that uh, simple now that you can directly apply the Greshoff law for 4 R chain. The fourth link's length is this one B F that will keep on changing. So how can you apply that law right rather discussing about that also is wrong because it's simply not 3 R chain it is 3 uh, simply it is not 4 R chain it is 3 R 1 P chain. So talking about the, that concept actually is absolutely not the right approach 
whether it gives you the right answer or wrong answer that is separate but applying that logic itself is wrong here so if you are trying to do that don't do that that is illogical to do illogical i am not even talking about its answer what answer it gives it is simply illogical to do here okay now what is the other method that we can apply here as i told you we can apply the concept of 3 r 1 p chain but for that we need to understand first what kind of motion is going on here now if you look at the question it gave you this ab perpendicular to ce and fd perpendicular to ce what exactly that means it means that ab is going to be parallel to fd right if this is equation 1 this is equation 2 if you combine both this is what you are going to get that ab will be perpendicular to ce fd is also perpendicular to ce means ab and fd are going to be parallel to each other whatever be the motion whether it is completely rotating or whether it is oscillating these two are going to be parallel to each other right now if we use the concept of 3 r 1 p chain that we discussed the fundamental was that slider is creating an issue and slider which is not a revolute pair that needs to be converted to a revolute equivalent revolute pair right by considering the concept of ground hinge right we needed to shift it to infinity that's what we are going to do here that's what we are going to do here this slider actually is not a revolute joint so analysis is getting difficult due to that right if this was simply a revolute joint between f and v then it's just 4 r pair you could use your Grashof law right but since it is not so that is creating an issue there so we are going to shift this convert this to a ground hinge and how do we do that the ground hinge exists at infinity for a slider right this is going to infinity so this point b is assumed to be a ground hinge at infinity and obviously if you want to satisfy the conditions that bd is perpendicular to fd this also needs to move to infinity rather consider it just like we considered just like we discussed in the 3r1p chain the link parallel to the slider also got shifted to the infinity right because if b is shifting and bd needs to be perpendicular to fd obviously d is also at infinity and now we can say listen to me carefully that both ab and fd are meeting at infinity both ab and fd are meeting at infinity even though b and d are separated by some distance by some few centimeter the distance between them it can be few centimeter right one two three four five centimeter but since these lengths fd and ab are so long we can say that they are meeting at infinity the distance between them is negligible when we are considering them considering them at infinity that is why this chain is now reduced to a 4 r chain 4 revolute joint chain this is first r this is second r this is third r and fourth r is at infinity actually both of them are not actually meeting each other but since they are so long going parallel till infinity the gap between them this gap does not matter that gap will become so small and this is why this is why this becomes one two three and fourth revolute where is fourth revolute pair where is fourth revolute joint at the infinity and this is why even when this mechanism rotates because whether it performs full rotation complete crank motion or oscillation motion these two are going to move and they will always stay parallel to each other while moving we concluded that right ab perpendicular to ce fd perpendicular to ce so however they move the distance between b and d changes decreases increases whatever happens since we have assumed them to be like a ground hinge at infinity that distance will not matter if they are coming closer or farther we will consider them at infinity and then accordingly we will use the Grashof law now which we use for 3 r 1 p chain by converting it to equivalent 4 r chain that's what we have done here 1 2 3 and 4 these are the 4 r 4 revolute pairs 4 revolute joints of this mechanism and now when we go about to solve them as i told you they will be moving to infinity they are moving to infinity what are the four distances for link link lengths that we have link number one is three centimeter 3 centimeter link number 2 is 5 centimeter link number 3 you can say is 3 centimeter plus l infinity right because this is now extending further to infinity so 3 plus infinite length and this is 1.5 plus infinite length right same approach 
This is the same approach which we applied while using the concept of 3R1P chain, right? So don't think that sir, 3 plus infinity so should, should be equal to L infinity only, na? If you do that, you will not be able to solve it, right? So this is something that I have already discussed in the course for I think 5-10 minutes. So I am not repeating that here. Similarly, link 4 is equal to 1.5 plus L infinity, 1.5 plus L infinity. Now, which one is the minimum? Here, this is the minimum. This is L minimum. Which one is maximum? 3 plus L infinity is L maximum. So, as per the Grashoff law for 4R chain, which we can apply now, since it has now reduced to a 4R chain, minimum length 3 plus maximum length 3 plus L infinity should be less than equal to the sum of other two, which is 5 plus 1.5 plus L infinity, correct? Now, L infinity, L infinity, cancel out. 3 plus 3 is 6, less than equal to 5 plus 1, 6.5, which is true. 6 is less than 6.5, correct? So, this is getting valid, means it is a Grashoff chain. Listen to me just carefully. Means there is no confusion about option B. This was anyway wrong, no confusion about option B. And here it seems like a Grashoff chain with link A, A G, A, B, C, D, E, F completely rotating, right? So anyone who used the concept of 3R1P chain got the answer, solved it without any trouble, without any confusion. But once you start analyzing this question, one problem occurs. Once you start analyzing the question, one problem occurs. Let me tell you that problem. The question says that... Uh, T shaped link C D E F C D E F is constructed such that slider V can cross the point D and C is sufficiently long. There is a space between that. So D and AND. While typing I think the space was not there. So D and space. It is not DAND. It is D space AND. Okay. So the line is that slider V can cross the point D. This can word are extremely important and this is the word which made me think that maybe the data given in this question is wrong. It is possible na, that in place of 5 if you write 6 or in place of 3 if you write 4, the mathematics can change, right? So this got me thinking that maybe the question wants to convey that this actually can slide and cross DE. Otherwise, what is the significance of this line? The slider V can cross the point D, right? It means it is saying that it will cross. Both are different. It can cross and it will cross. Both of them are different. Suppose, now let us suppose here. Suppose I am assuming, assuming that it is Grashoff. I am assuming that it is Grashoff. And it is rotating in such a way that D will approach D. And it may cross also, but we will approach D because what you may think while imagining the mechanism that FD will rotate, correct? So if FD rotates, this CE will be perpendicular to FD, that will also rotate. So if FD has reached here, this will be CE. If this is FD, so this is E, this is C, correct? And where this AB will be, this AG would have also slightly rotated. Maybe it would have reached here and maybe this is a and this is B. Are you getting the point? When this FD is rotating, when this FD is rotating, so this CE is aligning like this and B obviously sliding over that and B now has reached here. B and D have coincided. B has approached D. So you have got this one triangle, right? So I just thought that let us do one thing. Let us see whether that triangle is possible or not because if they are trying to rotate, then there should be a situation where FD has rotated, AB has also rotated and B and D, the distance between them will change and obviously distance between B and D will change. There is no doubt that distance between B and D will change. I will show that to you in animation also. But I thought of a point that if it is Grashoff, then B and D should reach each other and it should cross, right? So if we make that configuration, this is G, this is F and uh, this is A and then since it has rotated, it has reached here, this would also have moved slightly, AG is also rotating, maybe it has reached here, A has reached here and then you have AB, correct? 
So maybe something like this you have got and then you have CE. So this point here, this point here is F D D, correct? But A B has also reached there. So B is also there. Something like this, okay? And now if I analyze this triangle, look, have a look at the length. I am talk, talking about this triangle here. Have a look at the length. This length is 3. This length is 5. How much is going to be this length? This length between A and F. How much is going to be the distance between A and F? Because FD is this much. This is FD. So this length is 1.5 from F to D. And AB is how much? 3. AB is 3. So A to B is 3. F to D is 1.5. Means this also needs to be 1.5. So in this triangle, in this triangle, we have 3 lengths. 1.5, 3 and 5. Is this possible? Is this a possible triangle? No. Because if you sum of any two sides in a triangle, sum of any two sides should always be greater than the third side, right? This plus this is 4.5. 1.5 plus 3 is 4.5, which is not greater than 5. So this triangle, this triangle is not possible. It is not possible that we can have a triangle like this. So which has two different conclusions now? One, that either this is a non grashoff chain because if it needs to rotate, it needs to reach here and this configuration is not possible. So either this is a non grashoff chain or it is a grashoff chain but it is going to rotate in some random manner which is not going to be like this, right? So this has come down to imagination of the mechanism. You need to imagine how the mechanism is moving because if the mechanism is moving like this then definitely I can say with 100% guarantee whatever you have got from the concept it is wrong because question may give you na, different data. This how you have got by data only. Na. So maybe in the question if data is somewhere here and there suppose this length here instead of 3 this is 4 suppose. So what will happen this will be 4 this will become 7. So then it will not be valid. So it could be possible that the question, the data that it gave, it was inconsistent data. Such an error is called as inconsistency. Inconsistency, inconsistent data. And you can see that. You can see that. This has happened. This error has happened in gate many times before. Inconsistent data in different subjects. So it is a possibility that maybe the data here is inconsistent. Just listen to me carefully. And this analysis, even though it is saying Reshoff, but actually it is non Greshoff because if it needs to be Greshoff, it needs to rotate like this. If it needs to rotate like this, it can never reach this configuration because this triangle is impossible. So this is not a Greshoff. So this is one way of approaching, especially when, listen to me clearly, your, if you are get thinking that, Array, sir, then what should be the answer? It is debatable. It is not debatable. I will clear the debate by the end. I will also show you the animation as I told you. So here, this confusion increases even more when, what do you read? Slider B can cross point D. <laughs> so it means that yes, slider B can cross point D. No problem in that. But will it cross? So now the question is between can and will. A question of verbal aptitude. Right? Can, will are two different things. I can do something, but maybe I will not do it. Right? So this shows you the possibility of action, can. Will tells you the certainty of the action, will. So B can cross D, but will it cross or will it not cross? That is something which is open here. So if while reading the question, this keyword you missed or you misinterpreted, you thought that okay, it means B will cross D. Then definitely the confusion will increase even more and then definitely you will say that by whatever is the concept, this configuration is not possible. If B is reaching D, if B is crossing D, so obviously B is reaching D. If B is here, B has to cross D, it has to come to D first, now only then it will cross. And if it has to come to D, obviously while rotating, this point will come. If this point will come, this triangle will come. If this triangle comes, it is impossible to have a triangle like this. So this, whatever is the data given by, it is not a Grashoff chain, it is a non Grashoff chain. This is what, this is what a logic that can come to your mind. When this word is misinterpreted and you think that yes, B and D are going to cross each other. Getting? So now, if B and D are actually crossing each other, then I can say with 100% guarantee that there is an error in the data of this question, the answer will be non Grashoff. But if B and D 
do not cross each other then definitely this approach what we have discussed here this approach is correct data is not inconsistent data is not inconsistent because this condition will never occur if b and d are not crossing so now we need to look at the actual mechanism that whether d and d are actually crossing each other or not and that is why i have the simulation also of this mechanism the actual animation also so this is the animation and simulation of the mechanism that was given to us exact simulation with exact length this simulation is exact with the same lengths so you can see that in this case all the links are rotating about the fixed link so this is a Greshoff chain and you can see that B and D they are not touching each other the B and D they the distance between them is changing so even though the points are at infinity distance will change but that is not going to get affected right so the discussion that we did regarding the concept of 3R1P change the infinity method that is fine here because even though distance is changing it stays at infinity but the discussion that we did regarding the triangle the impossible triangle that situation is not arriving here why because B and D are not approaching each other if they were approaching that would have become a problem and the language of the question was in such a way that both the possibilities were open right so the only thing which can make the question debatable is this line here this word here can if this word is interpreted that B and D are going to approach and touch each other then answer is going to be non Greshoff. But obviously, can leaves the possibility open for both the situations. And then in the actual mechanism, we can see what is going to happen. They are not going to touch each other, right? So simply the method that I have discussed with you in the course, the same method you need to apply that I have discussed here also. And that will give you the answer as Greshoff chain. So in this case, since from the logic that we covered also, we are getting Greshoff. From the animation, actual animation also, we checked that it is Greshoff. So the debate of non-Greshoff on the basis of the word can, can be ended. And we can conclude that the answer for this question is going to be Greshoff chain. So there's no point in challenging this question. I don't think that the challenge done for this question will be accepted. 